Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the GitHub misconfigured database incident happened in 2018. Before going into the details, here are some availability requirements related to the database center specified by GitHub. So first, it should be data center agnostic. It should be tolerant of data center failure. It should have a short total outage time. Even in the extreme cases, it should only have up to 25 seconds of total outage time. And as much as possible, it should have lossless switching to a redundant or a standby system. As a background information, here are the data center infrastructure at GitHub. Basically, they have two different data centers, one located at the West Coast and one located at the East Coast. So on the date of the incident at around 11 p.m., there was a loss of connectivity between the East Coast Network Hub and East Coast Data Center. So here the connection was interrupted. The connectivity was restored within 43 seconds, but it triggered a chain of events and eventually lead to a 24 hours and 11 minutes of service degradation. So during those times, the users saw inconsistent and out of date information and the branches are missing. They were unable to push, unable to build blog posts, etc. So what exactly had happened? Here is a normal topology. Basically, there are a set of primary nodes in the US East Coast, and the writes from the application tire has been sent to this primary node. The primary node then sends copies of replicas to data center at US East Coast and data center at US West Coast as well. However, during the disconnectivity events, the management tool which they use orchestrator at GitHub, it starts a automatic process of reselecting the leadership and it chooses the node in the West Coast. So now application tire wrote traffic to the new primaries in the West Coast site, which is here. And now the US East Coast data center, it contained a brief period of writes that has now been replicated to US West Coast and US West Coast also has new data writes that has not been replicated to US East Coast. So now both data center contained writes has not been present in other data center. So they cannot switch the primary snow back to the US East Coast data center. And here is the invalid topology. And now the company has a choice to make. Either they can choose option one that maintain the site availability. Basically, they can just promote the primary node at East Coast Data Center directly. However, it has been 40 minutes since the incident and there were 40 minutes of data right to the West Coast and those data will be lost. And alternatively, the company can choose to maintain the data integrity by resolving data inconsistencies and implements the failover procedure for, for MySQL. But because it, it will take a long time to restore data from the cloud backup service, um, the site will, re will suffer from an extended degradation of service. And apparently GitHub made an explicit choice of maintaining the data integrity while jeopardizing its site availability. So it starts the process of um, restoring the data. It took them 11 hours to restore multiple terabytes of data, and it took them another five hours to synchronize new writes in West Coast Data Center to the East Coast Data Center. And after 24 hours from the incident, everything were back to normal. So after the incident, the company report that some data inconsistencies were left unresolved. By Captured and analyzing the MySQL binary logs, the GitHub reported that those inconsistent writes were relatively small in size. So for example, one of the busiest cluster has less than a thousand writes in the affected window. And the GitHub starts um, analyzing those writes to see if they can automatically reconcile those um, inconsistent writes. And if not, they start to outreach to the users. And GitHub also started a set of initiatives. First, they adjust the configuration of Orchestrator to prevent the promotion of database primaries across regional boundaries, which is essentially what caused the misconfigured database incident we talked about. And second, it 
supports N plus one redundancy at the facility level to tolerate the full failure of a single data center. Third, it also starts the systemic practice of validating failure scenarios before affecting users through fault injection and chaos engineering toolings. And here are some resources about this incident. I found it pretty interesting because it shows when the company faced a choice between site availability and data integrity, how GitHub made the trade-off and what consequences it needs to face. And it is very interesting to think about if other companies like, let's say, Amazon face the same challenge, what option would they choose? And this is all of the presentation and thank you for listening.